Hello folks, this is Jan Montarsi here from Gem Box Designs. Today I'm going to be making the first of a short series of videos. I'm going to be making the videos in smaller time segments. My videos tend to be very long and I'm trying to avoid that. So today's video will be ma making uh, Skinner blends that will then be used with the Create template to, to make um, different patterns from quilted stripes to triangle geometric patterns. Um, I will be using my blend angle templates today. These are the blend angle templates and I'll only be using the one. If you'd like to order any of these uh, tools that I sell, um, go to blend angles on Facebook. You can search it, all one word, blend angles, and there's a photo album that says Blend Angles Store, and you can message me what you want and I'll send you a PayPal request. Um, we will be using just the small triangle today. So I'll put the rest of these out of the way. In later videos, we will be using the Create template, which I also sell. It's on the Blend Angle page, but I'm gonna put that away for now and show you what we'll be doing today. Now my colors I'm using today, take this plastic off of here. And I had I made a tool video previous to this which will be posted of all the tools I'm using so I don't have to do it on every video. The clay colors I'm using today and these are Primo, Sculpey Primo colors. This is Fuchsia. Uh, if you're using another brand, Magento will be fine. Turquoise or Cayenne, Ultramarine Blue, and Cad Yellow. I already have blends made up so that we don't have to take the time of uh, having you watch me on off camera make blends. So we're going to first um, show you the simple way to use the create tim or the the blend angles triangles. Uh, here I put it on my clay. My clay is rolled out on a number two on my uh, Atlas pasta machine. I am using a 150 Atlas, which is 150 millimeters wide. Um, if you're using the 180 millimeter, the only difference between what we're doing today is adding one triangle. But the ease of this. Instead of taking a blade and trying to line it up, it's just as easy to use a needle tool, hold the corners of your template. Whoops, I went off. And I am working on a plastic sheet. I, you get a sample of these with your templates, but you can buy them at Dollar Tree. I love them. I work on them all the time. I have them cut up in different sizes. I'm trying to show you this without being in the way of the camera. But they're that easy to cut. You can cut up a bunch. Also, you want to work with leached clay. Now, another tool I use is cardstock. One of my other favorite tools. So, what we have here, pull this off to the side here. This is our setup for a Skinner blend based on the 150 Atlas machine. And you'll notice I have one, two, three, four, five full, full triangles made with the mini, the mini template. Then I have two half triangles. Um, I have fuchsia next to my ultramarine blue, which will create a nice deep purple color. Then it will go into a nice deep green color with the next to the yellow. Then the fuchsia will go into a, a orange and then pink. 
Then we'll go into another variation of a purple, mixing with the cayenne turquoise color, and then into a light green. Now I have double yellow here because yellow is a weak color and you tend to lose it. So I wanted to have extra. That's why I have a double, a double up on the yellow. Now after blending this, first of all, I'm gonna show you how I, I cut these. Instead of trying to fold this and have all those seams separate, the best thing to do is just cut your blend in half and stack it that way. This is my workhorse blade. And this is what your blend will look like. Now I'm gonna put this through first on my thickest setting. I'm not folding this. I'm gonna work all, all the way down to my fifth setting. One at a time, putting this through my pasta machine. At this point, this is a size sheet I'm gonna work on. You can see with just six of these little triangles, I'm making a Skinner blend without having to have a giant sheet. When you fold your Skinner blend, when I do it, I just touch the ends. I leave the middle alone, and then I pick this up and I seat these two folded edges into the rollers of my pasta machine and make sure it's lined across. I don't, I don't crimp the middle. I find that I get the most even blends by using A, the width of my pasta machine, the full width, and just line up your ends, leave this alone. It will, it'll straighten itself out as you blend. I'm just gonna blend this a few times for you. Do my ends. You can see, and also by working on a thinner sheet, your blend happens faster. All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side here because I have one already done. And this is the one I have done. Now you can see the colors. The fuchsia went into the ultramarine blue and then into the yellow. Then the yellow went into the fuchsia again, creating some orange. And then into this nice peachy pink orange color. So it goes into red. And then where it mixes with the turquoise, it goes back into a purple color. It's a different purple than this. A little bit of turquoise and then into the green. And then we have our large section of yellow. Now, if you're ever making a blend and you even want a smaller blend, put a bunch of color at one end. If I only wanted, say, this much of a blend, the yellow into the pink into the turquoise, I could put a whole bunch of yellow at this end and a whole bunch of turquoise at this end, and then when I'm done blending, blending, cut those away, cut the pure color away, and just have my small mini blend. I do that quite a bit. So, this is a pure color blend. Now, one thing I do do, I always mix a little white in with my yellow. For a whole block of yellow, for a whole block, I, I mix one twelfth of a block of white into my yellow, which I don't have any white here, but that would be half. This would be a quarter. If you cut one quarter into three parts, that one block would be a twelfth. It, it bumps up your yellow. And you'll see in, in, in uh, some more blends I have here to show you. Now, one thing about this blend, the colors are nice, they're bright, but they don't really all go together. Now, two greens. You see the, these two greens next to each other? Well, let me try this again. Try it this way. This is more of a forest green, and this is looks more like a minty green. But what I do, and I've learned color, different color things from different people, uh, to name a few, Marie Seagal, 
Lindley Hulani and Carol Simmons, and they all have different ways they do things, and some of these things may be similar to theirs. But I wanna harmonize this whole blend. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the smallest little cut of the blend the whole way across, and just with that little tiny bit, I'm going to mix it up into a mud color. Okay, now, oops, I'm working with leach clay, always leach your clay if you're going to be using the create template. Now I have this little piece of mud, I'm going to roll it back out evenly, as even as I can. Overlap that a little bit where it got thin. So basically, I'm going to take this piece of mud off the excess. And the more mud you add, the darker, of course, you're going to make your blend. But then I'm going to just put this across my whole blend. And that mud has every color in it. So you're adding every color to every other color, which will harmonize them. Usually what I do is I fold up to that for my first pass. And then I will re-blend this. Now I'm only going to put this through one more time because I want you to see the actual pure color there. I don't want to mix this up too much. So this is still pretty much the pure color blend. And this is the blend. If you can see this. I don't want them to stick. This is the blend after I've added the little bit of mud. And I am gonna hold that up. Hopefully you can see the two color differences. That tiny little bit of mud made that much of a difference. And you can really tell with the yellow, but you can tell in the other colors also. Then what I do I then add for myself, I, I, now I would use that that way by itself, it's a nice muted tone, but I wanted the colors a little brighter, so I went and I added a strip of white. Now how much white did I add to this piece? I'll show you here. I'll put my yellows together so you can see the difference. Your color with mud added with white added. When I'm figuring out how much white to add, straighten that off. And I just usually eyeball it. If I'm going to make, if I'm going to make a, a big cane or I need a lot, I will make multiple sheets, blend them, and then put them all together and re-blend them into one. But just to mark this. That's half, that's a quarter, that's an eighth. So I usually cut my, my strip I'm adding somewhere between an eighth and a twelfth. And I would have added that through and re-blended it to make this brighter version. And this is the color I'll be using in future videos. Um, this works with any color combination you, you come up with, whether you're using cad yellow or zinc yellow, whether you're using cobalt or cadmium red instead of fuchsia. If you do the little strip of mud trick across the whole blend, it will harmonize your blend. And if, if you think you made a blend too dark, just make another blend of pure color and add the two together, which I will be adding all three of these together for my next video. I will be putting them together and re-blending them into one. 
Um, we will make that our next video. Our next video, we will be creating a, a stacked cane with black and white in between. And that will then be used in the next video following that one to make triangle patterns and quilt square patterns with the create template. So once again, this is trying to keep it short. Aha, uh -huh, I buried my sign. You can go to Blend Angles on Facebook and order my tools. Please watch for the next video. I will be posting them all at the same time, so you can watch them run right after the other. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.